Keith Wood is with us. Keith, how are you? I'm excellent, Chair. Uh, how are you? I'm very good. Um, I'm disappointed that Stephen Larkin was leaving, to be honest. It felt like I wanted to see what he was going to be able to do with a fully fit Joey Carberry and all of the available talents to him. Imagine Carberry and Dialende finally, Carberry fit and in form and Dialende finally just around. Uh, it'd be nice to see what he could do, but we're never really going to get that opportunity. So um, was this news a surprise in the end to you? Did you know it was coming? What did you think about it? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know it was coming. I knew there was. Um, I knew there were some some doubts with it, but didn't know that it was coming. It came as a shock that it, it that news arrived so early. Um, uh, I think it's a huge pity, actually, because we never got the chance to see what this guy could be. I mean, he was a maestro on the field when he played himself. Um, broke my heart on numerous occasions. Uh, he had a lovely ghosting attitude to to playing at ten where he, he could play to a structure, but it was when there was one tiny little chink in the defence, he would go off and do something um, very differently. He ran very differently. You know, he was a, quite a tall guy for 10. Um, and I felt at times that that's something that might fit into Joey Carberry's remit, that the ability to, um, to make a decision on the fly that wasn't part of a structure is probably what marks him out. And I think we saw a bit of that last weekend. So, look, I think it's an awful pity. I, I don't know that we got to see the best of him. Um, uh, personally, I'm still not convinced of the manner in which Munster are playing. I, I think it's uh, it's it's too slow down, too structured, um, too akin to the South African game, if, I, if I'm honest. Um, and it would be interesting to see whether there's a change. And that's the one bit I would look for after last weekend was or th the last few weekends is that we've seen uh, a team that has consistently gone about making a change in Ireland in how it's it's run through um, a whole variety of different ball players and whether Munster will look to do something like that or stay with the manner in which they're doing. Um, uh, and I think that comes the big challenge. And for that to really work, I think an awful lot of that would have gone through someone like Larkham. So with him, um, he's he's there and will be there till the end of the season. Um, but as we know, and we've seen with Ireland, it doesn't happen over a short period of time. It takes a much longer period of time to to make those sort of changes. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Cause it, it, they definitely have the players who can play a style of rugby that would be different from the South African style of rugby. And I, I can also see that they have the players who can play the South African style of rugby too. So uh, do you feel a little bit like they're caught between the two stools at the moment? Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think Munster are as big a pack of forwards. And I think your requirement for... If, like if we look at South Africa's rugby, and I know there was a huge amount of criticism and it's consistently, but it's their way of playing. Let them play it. They play it very well. They they kick quite a lot. They have a huge forward pack that they use very well. They have a 10 that kicks from distance, but also boosts the ball in the air quite a lot. And the second there's a chink, and in most cases for South Africa, when there is an advantage from a penalty, they will try everything and anything. And they have two unbelievably quick guys on the wing. Um, it, the problem with that is it's quite attritional on the body. You need to be very big for that to be... Uh, uh, repeatable. So, um, uh, and at times when we've seen monster change, it's been the younger guys that have made that change, and that's we've seen that this season. But it's when they reverted back, um, they haven't quite got to the level of performance, and that's why I've been really interested to watch the monster players play for Ireland over this period of time, because they have all embraced it, um, and. Uh, maybe not all, actually, but um, most have embraced it. And uh, you've seen Craig Casey come on off the off the bench the other day and suddenly play like he he played when he came on the scene, which was an all action game: get to the ball first, um, get it off the ground, get it out of your hands as quickly as you can, and let other people make some of the decisions. And so, look, I do think Munster can. I just think it takes a period of time, and I'm hoping that that's part of the journey that they're on because. The kicking in the air um, and one out runner game um, had its day, but it has had its day. We, we obviously are looking at the Larkham decision through yeah. the prism of what's going to come next in terms of Johan van Graan. There's been strong suggestions that he's on the verge of signing an, another extension to his contract. So it'll be interesting to see if that happens first off and if it does, who he hopes 
is added to that coaching ticket and ultimately who's making that decision is that like, are the IRFU involved at any level in saying actually we have young rising Irish coaches who we think would fit there or does it have to be somebody who is simpatico with the existing tickets well I don't think um, I don't think any decision happens at at that level without going through uh, David Nusa for a filter so um, the the IRFU will be heavily involved in that decision and um, whether it is about bringing uh, Irish guys back um, I know they were talking about uh, Prendergast coming back from France. Um, whether that's in the in the offering or not, I actually I don't know. And but I would like to see some more Irish coaches get involved because I think that that's important for the game. Um, it's important also for the guys that are coming to retirement that there are viable options for them um, to still be involved in the game afterwards. And um, because you want uh, you want that level of continuity and you want some of the skills as we've seen. I think with Paul O'Connell with Ireland, um, it's having the right job for the right man or the right man for the right job or whatever way you want to put it. But he has had huge success uh, in terms of the attention to detail from the forwards. And I think it's a role that suits him perfectly. So um, I do think that there is a need for some of those players uh, or past players to get back into the game or even some of the other coaches because they've been talking about Noel McNamara um, who who cut his teeth with Glenn Stahl and then went to Leinster and is now down in South Africa. Um, but look, for me, an awful lot of this comes down to philosophy and it's what we talked about for Ireland for the last few weeks was um, it was refreshing to see the game being played differently. And um, look, do you know what's an interesting thing? this morning is that we're not talking about Johnny Sexton. And if you think of all the chat prior to the autumn internationals, it was about Johnny and it was all about Johnny. And what do we do and where, where can he go? And we're all saying, well, it's too much of a risk for him to go to the World Cup. Well, it doesn't seem like a risk now, four weeks later, because not everything goes through 10 and not everything goes through the, the, the sort of genius that um, Johnny Sexton was in the past where he has to make every single decision um, now that is a shared load and then you can say when that happens well actually he could well get to the to the World Cup because if, if he gets injured which he has done a fair bit that um, other people can fit into that role it's just very few could have fit into the old Johnny Sexton role Talk us through that a little bit then Keith when it, when it comes to the different playmakers that Ireland have on the pitch or like has it completely exploded now to the sustainable thing where you're looking at five six players on the pitch that can be the creative spark for this Ireland team well for me it's it's a philosophy um, around it be the structure of of uh, all the three or four or five different options um, and those options they come off nine or ten or they come off a pivot off one of the forwards but the decision make, making is made by a nine or ten but it isn't made like an old traditional setup where you just hit the 10 and everything kind of works off 10. And if he takes it flat to the line, he's an opportunity of finding a hole. And that's where Johnny was getting smashed. And if he takes it too deep, nobody puts any pressure on him. And they all go out and, and put pressure on 12, 13, and the ball doesn't get to the wing. Um, for me, this seems like almost a natural way of doing it. So people make a decision, but there's two or three or four options nearly for every ball that goes out there and it's played as being what's the right option. I don't know if that's true, but that's what it looks like, that they're not all preordained or there may be a preordained call, but you also have two or three bailout options if you need it, if they're a better option or if you need to protect a player. And so for that, I thought uh, Joey Carberry came into it um, 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 you know, against New, Ze against New Zealand and I thought he was a little bit nervous into it and I thought he built up his confidence and then I saw him um, against Argentina and again I thought he was a little bit nervous at the start but he grew into it which is for a guy who has had huge injury and hasn't um, um, you know, had lost a bit of confidence I think he gained a huge amount of confidence back and, uh, and then when Harry Byrne went in there uh, Joey slotted into 15 and um, we know that with more time on the ball anyway he is explosive and he will take up decision making process which it just looked far far better far more energetic and far harder for a defensive line out to target um, I say all the time that if you're playing against Ireland have a hard 
press defence, um, 7, 10, 12, 13, up against the Ireland defence. And that puts Johnny Sexton under huge pressure. And if he's if he takes it flat, he's under pressure. If it's too deep, you can push out on everybody else. You do that now, um, and anybody has any doubt in the defensive line, because there's so many options, there, there, there can be chinks. It doesn't mean you're going to win everything, but it means the opposition now really have to think about what they're doing. They don't just have to smash up in the line. And so I think the onus is on more people, more players. And for me, that was the most heartening element of the whole thing. I looked at Japan and thought Japan was, was uh, I, I, I kind of, I, I thought Japan were dreadful. Um, and I didn't get too excited by it because I thought there was too much space on the field. But then in the next two weeks, um, with not the same players, uh, there was more space again because that hard press became very difficult for an opposition to do. So, look, I just thought it was a, a cracking uh, autumn for, for Ireland um, and it's a great start for where we can where we can go afterwards. And um, look, we won't fall into the idea that everything is rosy in the garden, but all you have to do is think and, and, and listen to what the players have said about the level of enjoyment that they're having. Well, of yeah. course you're going to have enjoyment. Of course you're going to have enjoyment and something like that, Ger, where, um where you're given an option to make a decision. So for different times over the last, um, like the really successful side under Joe Schmidt, everything had to be perfect and absolute precision. And I think we will look for more precision, but I hope we never lose the, the the sort of joy of playing and the ability to throw a 50-50 pass because it's the right thing to do um, or the idea that you, you should try something and you should never be castigated for trying something. So uh, that's what it looked like. And um, and I think it's a fairly significant change. You, you mentioned there, Keith, that the high press, the hard press, and I guess that, that line speed that, that decimated Ireland and it caused them real problems in, in 2019 onwards. What do you expect the reaction to this style of play to now be going into next year's Six Nations? Well, I think if you look at it firstly, the reason it was it put Ireland under so much pressure was pretty much everything came off, um, came off 10. So it was either box kicked or came off 10. So that's where the pressure point lay. Um, uh, and that's where the vulnerability lay. And I think we said this a few weeks ago, uh, criticizing, it wasn't the criticizing of Johnny Sexton, it's the criticizing of the fact that we didn't have other options. Well, we seem to have the options now because we're trying to play a different style. So what's going to happen and how are other coaches going to unpick that? Um, that's where, it's, for me, that's going to be the enjoyable um, part to watch, to see whether other people try and unpick us, and this is the right time for us to learn what things work and what things don't work. Um, but also uh, how how opposition coaches go about it. So um, there can be, it's the, it used to be a 13 hook where it would be a, a really hard press up at 12 and 13, but that then goes to the kick pass and that goes for the pass over the top, um, um, but that can be exploited again. Um, look, I, for me, this is working for us for a couple of reasons. One of them is the law change. Um, the um, the fifty twenty two has made a big difference that you have players um, standing further back and having to stand further back. So there is slightly more space in the in the um, defensive setup. So there are other opportunities if you're able to change an angle or if there's other ball handers and a tip on is the hardest thing of the lot. Um, there's also the uh, the tackle heights coming down. Um, that's incredibly important. If you're tackling across the shoulder line to stop the ball, there are very few tip ons in that instance. So that, um, that risk of giving away a penalty at that is freeing up the game as well. So if this happens every, every four years where there are changes and adjustments to the laws where um, it's the coaches deal their way out of it. So I think Ireland are um, have moved not ahead of the curve, but they've moved um, in a fashion of where they're a bit more comfortable to be footballers yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the skill level is very high of the, of the new generation of players who are coming through as well. We see them very comfortable on the ball. One last question to wrap this up, Keith. The, the, the style that we've watched over the last few weeks, and to bring this right back to Larkham, does this actually increase the pressure then 
on Van Grand to make sure that the, the style that the Munster supporters watch and the players get to execute is more progressive over the next while. And is that maybe one of the most interesting narratives over the next couple of months for us to keep an eye on? Well, I actually think that's a really uh, good narrative. And I also think, um, and if we take the two scrub halves that played on on Saturday, um, the younger guy, so Casey uh, was on, uh, came on, and it was immediately zip, 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 zip. And I actually think that's how he plays best. It suits him. And that's how he started with Monster. And he's had to move back to a box kicking and kind of slow it down because that's the way Monster play a lot of the time. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. And I thought he relished it and looked fantastic. For Conor Murray, I thought he didn't relish it. And I thought he box kicked too much early on as if that wasn't... Um, and that was that wasn't always the way he played either. So, um, but under the way Munster play, Conor Murray suits them down to the ground, not Craig Casey. And um, but under the way Ireland play, uh, Craig Casey's style suits Ireland. And then it's up to Conor to be able to adjust between the two, and Craig to be able to adjust between the two. So I think the change at, at national level put huge pressure on Munster. Do they continue in the manner in which they're going or do they embrace that one performance that they had away to Scarlets where uh, where the ball in the hand and the width and the different players presenting themselves at different times seemed to offer a level of excitement. Um, but the only thing I would say after that was that was, uh, that was a big change in the manner in which Munster play and most of those players didn't play the following week. Okay, we'll uh, keep a very close eye on the brewing scrum half controversy. Keith, great to have you with us. Thanks a million. Brilliant. Cheers, gents. Keith Wood giving us his thoughts there on the rugby scenario. Give us your thoughts. If you're a Munster fan, we'd love to hear from you. The hashtag is OTBAM or of course you can leave a comment on the YouTube stream. It's 29 minutes past eight. I want to tell you about this because over the next couple of days we're going to start releasing content from our next Cadbury FC Roadshow and if you're an Arsenal or an Ireland fan then you don't want to miss it. We'll go behind the scenes with the Arsenal Invincible Robert Pires. We'll speak with current Gunners and Ireland captain uh, Katie McCabe. We'll also be joined by former Arsenal strength and conditioning coach and Ireland rugby legend Jerry Flannery. Great conversations about what it's actually like, just the very presence of Liam Brady on the training ground and the impact that that would have on training sessions for the academy. It's really interesting to hear Jerry Flannery talk about that. Uh, it's all with thanks to Cadbury FC and their club partnerships, granting you behind the scenes access at the Premier League's biggest clubs coming soon to OTB Sports social channels.